What's going on everyone? Welcome to this video! So, I am finally doing the next Scooby-Doo movie review and as you clearly can see by the title, we are reviewing Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost today. So, the second direct-to-video movie. Okay, so, let's get into it. So, if you guys don't remember, I talk about the plot of the movie first. We talk about the characters and the voice actors. Then the setting. I have them all on my phone, that's why I am. I have reference. Um, then the music and the score used in the film. Then we talk about the animation and art style. And then the villain of the movie. Then we'll talk about the DVD cover and the trailer. And then my overall verdict of the film. And we will talk about um, a little fun facts about this movie. This one. So, yeah, let's get into this. So the plot for this movie. So after Zombie Island, we continue on. The gang are still technically adults, but they are back to solving mysteries. Um, we start the film out, they are like in a museum, and they're disguised as different um, time period type things. Like Shaggy and Scooby are like cavemen people, and Daphne and Fred are in like Shakespeare. Shakespeare type uh, setting, exhibit, and whatever. Um, anyway, so they are solving a mystery, you know, we we open up to them capturing the villains and whatever, but they get a little help from a little horror story writer. So, this is where we are introduced to Ben Ravencroft. So Ben Ravencroft is actually voiced by Tim Curry. So if you are a fan of him, then check this movie out. So, yes, we have Ben Ravencroft, who is a horror writer. Obviously, Velma knows him. She's super excited to meet him and whatever. So Ben has heard stories about the gang and whatever, and wants their help to basically clear his ancestor's name of being a witch. Everyone in this town that he lives in is from, um, thinks that his ancestor was a witch, but he is trying to find her journal to prove that she was not a witch, but she was just, you know, a, a healing, um, person, you know, use herbs and oils and natural things to heal people. Um, anyway, so, you know, they agree to help him. They go to Oak Haven, um, which is in... Massachusetts, I believe. Yeah, Oak Haven, Massachusetts. It is a fake place. It is not real. So, they go and they get to the town and the town has turned into a tourist attraction. They are having like a pilgrim witch trial weekend thing going on and Ben is just not. He's like, um, cut it. Er, so basically, they are using his ancestor, the witch, as a tourist attraction, you know, to pull in tourists to the town, you know, saying, oh, we have a witch in our town and whatever. And that's basically where the mystery gets started. They have to figure out who the heck is um, the witch, why, you know, why the witch is doing all these things and whatever. So anyways, um, the film kind of starts out quite slow, honestly. Um, we kind of don't get a witch encounter for quite a while. And when we do, it's um, after Shaggy and Scooby have ate so much. And they're running away because they met these girls who they thought they were like vampires or something, which turn out to be the Hex Girls. We have the first introduction to the Hex Girls in this film. Which then the Hex Girls, you know, have appearances later on throughout Scooby-Doo's history and has become a very, like, popular characters for the Scooby brand. Um, so, they're running away and then they see the witch and whatever. So the witch, you know, is flying and she can throw 
these fireballs and whatever. Um, so anyways, the gang find them, they go on this investigation, um, obviously, you know, find clues and whatever. Anyway, so the story goes on, they capture the witch within like 40 minutes of the movie, and it turns out to be one of the hex girl's uh, father, who again was just doing it to pull in tourists, you know, for attraction and whatever. So, yeah, you're kind of like, oh, well, that was... But then, they have a little plot twist. So, they find the so-called journal. Well, the journal actually turns out to be a spell book, and Ben Ravencroft actually knew his ancestor was a witch and wanted the spell book to bring her back so they could rule together as a warlock and witch. So actually Ben Ravencroft paid the man in the beginning of the movie um, to, you know, scare them and whatever so that he basically had a reason to go find the gang and whatever because he knew that the gang could find the spell book for him. So then we have like a 20 minute time where um, the real, the real witch of the movie basically um, is tormenting the gang and the town. She's using her powers to turn pumpkins to life and trees and turn turkeys giant and whatever else. Um, it kind of gets crazy at t times. You're kind of, and I'll admit, it kind of goes a little too long at times. You're just like, okay, we get it. Um, basically they're all fighting for the, for the spell book. Um, anyways. So, movie goes on, um, Thorn, the main, um, girl in the Hex Girls, uh, is the only one that can basically use the spellbook and put everything back to normal because she's like one-fourth Wiccan or something. So, anyways, long story short, they get everything back to normal, they get the witch back into the spellbook, but... Ben Ravencroft gets sucked into the book with her. So that was kind of a cruel death for him. Rip his soul. And then they have a big jamboree at the end of the movie. Woohoo! So, that is basically the plot of the movie. Um, can you tell I just don't enjoy this one as much already? Because I'll just admit it there, I don't. This is probably my least favorite of the original four uh, direct-to-video movies. So, moving on now. So there's the plot, okay? So we're gonna get into the characters and voice actors. So, uh, you know, we have Fred, we have Daphne and Velma, Shaggy, Scooby, um, and then we have the introduction of Ben Ravencroft. Like I said, he is voiced by Tim Curry. We have Thorne, um, which she is voiced by Jennifer. Hal, Hal, Hal. Um, we have Dusk, which is voiced by Jane Weedlin. Weedlin. We have Luna in the Hex Girls, Kimberly, who is played by Kimberly Brooks. And then we have Mayor Corey, uh, who is voiced by Neil Ross. We have Jack, um, which is the. No, it's not. We have Jack, who is the, like, chef and owner of the restaurant that Shaggy and Scooby devour, basically, who's played by Bob Jules. Um, then we have Sarah Ravencroft, who is Ben Ravencroft's ancestor, the witch, basically, who is played by Tress McNeil. And then Mr. McKnight, who is Thorne's father, who was the first witch, um, who is played by Peter R Renaday. So... The original gang, we have Fred, um, who's played by Frank Welker still. And we have Daphne, who is played by Mary Kay Bergman again. And Velma, which is played by B.J. Ward again. And then Shaggy actually gets a no new voice actor um, already, who is Scott Eines. Um, he was the voice of Scooby in Scooby-Doo on Zombie Islands. Uh, he still plays Scooby, but now he took over the role of Shaggy because Billy West, who played Shaggy in Zombie Island, um, got busy with Futurama and whatever, he had other stuff to do. So yeah, so those are the voice actors. Um, I will say I actually like 
Scott Innes as Shaggy better than Billy West. Um, but that's just me. That's just me. I think he's a great Scooby. And then obviously, um, the rest of the gang are great. Um, ben Ravencroft was, you know, voiced by Tim Curry. I thought he was a great character. Um, he, like, I don't know. He had a major kind of like, he was just very soft, I felt like, throughout the movie. And then once they found the spell book, like, he went, you know, evil. Um, and then, obviously, I love the Hex Girls, the voice actors for the Hex Girls. Come on. Bronx just gonna steal the show again. Um, and then, you know, all the minor characters, I mean, I guess they were great. I, they, the rest of the characters were great. So, so then the setting is Oak Haven, which, um, is said to be in Massachusetts. Um, it's taking place in a very autumn type, um, of time, season. Um, and so it's, it's almost around Thanksgiving type of thing. Um, there's people dressed as pilgrims, they're having like a pilgrim festival, you know, and then there's the big giant turkey at the end of the film, so it has very, it has a very lighter tone compared to Zombie Island, um, just because of, I feel like the season, you know, and all the colors in the movie. Um, overall, the setting is just very light and very kind of small town feel, which, um, I guess, yeah, you kind of, hey. Bronx, let's not play with that one. Which, you know, you can kind of associate small town, you know, with creepy goings on, you know, and whatever. So then for the music and score, um, like I said, the setting, you know, overall theme, or overall feeling of this movie is lighter than, uh, Zombie Island. So I feel like the score is a lot lighter too, um, but we actually have, you know, like, some music, some songs, we have Earth, Wind, Fire, and Air, which um, is a song that the Hex Girls play, and then there's a song called Hex Girl, which again, the Hex Girls play, and then at the beginning of the film, actually, um, the Scooby-Doo uh, Where Are You theme song was uh, played during the little chase sequence, um, and that was sung by none other than Billy Ray Cyrus, you know, they were just like, hey, you want to come sing Scooby-Doo, and he was like, sure. Why not? So the Earth, Wind, Fire, and Air in the Hex Girl song um, became kind of a stable for Scooby Doo over the years. Like they, when that, whenever the Hex Girls come into an episode or a movie again or something, um, that's always the two songs that they seem to sing, unless you know they come up with a new song for whatever's going on. Um, so yeah, so we actually had some music and it was like actually characters singing them this time rather than just like background music but the music in Zombie Island was great so you know no no shade no hate going on for these like they're great I love the songs that the Hex Girls sing um the theme song at the beginning is a little weird having Billy Ray Cyrus sing it but whatever I guess it fit the theme Okay, so the animation and art style is pretty much the same um, from Zombie Island because it was done by the same Japanese animation studio, Mook Animation. Um, you know, so it still kind of has that little anime feel. Um, you can really tell that in the restaurant scene when Scooby and Shaggy are just eating and eating, you know, and the other guests and whatever are kind of like, oh, what? Like, Look at them eating all that food. <gasps> so again, like I said, this um, has a lighter tone to it. So the colors are very bright in this film, especially with like the trees and the leaves for the autumn season and whatever. Um, I feel like the movie has a lot more daytime shots also. Um, they're, you know, doing stuff in the day. I mean, obviously, definitely, it definitely gets a bit darker when, um, Sarah Ravencroft comes out of the spell book and whatever. Um, and obviously that took place at nighttime, so it's darker and whatever. Um, but overall, I feel like the colors are a lot brighter in this film. Um, but the animation is pretty much the same as Zombie Island, so not much to talk about there.
Okay, so the villain for this film, um, originally it is the Witch of Oakhaven. Um, you know, she's like the traditional witch, you know, the witch hat and the pointy nose, you know, and is flying and whatever. But she has fireballs, because why not? Um, she's in a green, she, she has a green aesthetic going on, whatever. Um, who ended up being uh, Thorne's father, um, trying to just get Taurus and whatever. Um, overall, you know, it, it's one of those, oh, a witch. You know, it's a witch. That's about it. You know, the fireball part is a little different, but I mean, it's a witch, you know, she can grant, she can cast spells and whatever. So, um, overall, I don't know, her design is kind of creepy at first, and her voice, you know, is definitely, like, raspy and whatever, and witchy and all that. She's not riding, like, a broomstick, she just flies and whatever. Um, and she only comes at night, um, because there's a, there's a part of the movie. Oh. Hey, go get a toy. Look, get that. There's a part in the movie where, like, the whole town's waiting for the witch in the, kind of in the evening, but it's still light, and she doesn't show up, and then once the sun goes down, she shows up, but everyone's gone and whatever. So, um, I don't know. Overall, she's, she's kind of creepy, but you don't see a lot of her to really, I guess, grow to enjoy her as a villain. Um, but then, dude, you are just... I can't right now. Okay? Please, chill. No more. But then the real villain of this film is Sarah Ravencroft. Um, so she is like a spirit, basically. A spirit witch who can just bring anything to life and cast any type of spell and whatever. Um, overall, she doesn't really look Creepy. I think the creepiest part of her is her hair just goes. It's just like floating. And I think I don't know. She doesn't really look creepy. Um, obviously, what she does is creepy. You know, she's casting these pumpkins to life and trees to life and growing turkeys and whatever. Um, and we see her for like maybe 20-ish minutes. Um, but we had we had such a big background of her throughout the movie that she wasn't a witch and whatever so then the whole plot twist that she really was a witch almost uh, it, it almost was kind of expected to be honest for her um but you also don't really feel bad for her as soon as she comes out of the book um yeah i don't know uh overall the villains of this movie just, eh, eh, eh. Okay, so now we will talk about the DVD cover for this film. So, when I'm talking about the DVD cover, we look at it. Does it make you want to watch it? Does it make you want to pick it up? Does it make you want to learn more about it? You know, look into it, whatever. So, we're going to look at this. So, we got Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost right here, the title. Um... It's in like a greenish font and Witch's Ghost is all misty and, you know, supposed to be creepy and whatever. So I don't know, the logo's pretty cool, I guess. Um, so we have the Mystery Machine here. Um, so this is like the updated Mystery Machine that they were using for these films. Um, later in Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase, um, <clears throat> Fred actually says, I... I missed this old band, so like they've done something to the band or chain got a new band or something. So anyways, the current mystery machine is on here. Um, and then we have Velma in the background just like, oh no, and then uh, Scooby and Shaggy, hey. And then Scooby and Shaggy are like running away from the witch. Um, witch, <laughs> witch, witch. <laughs> so, I'm kind of very disappointed they have Sarah Ravencroft's witch on the DVD cover because that just gives away the plot twist of the movie. Um, so like when you're watching it, you know, and there's the first witch, the witch of Oakhaven, 
kind of know like, oh, that's not the real witch and stuff. So I don't know. Overall, for me, the DVD cover is just kind of, kind of just it's disappointing, honestly, because like hide hide her. You know, she's supposed to be the plot twist of the movie. So why are you just giving it away right right there and then? Um, I don't know, maybe it was, you know, trying to get people to, you know, want to pick it up more, you know, like, oh, a real witch or something. I don't know. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of the DVD cover. Um, the back is pretty plain. Pretty plain. Okay, so the trailer of this movie, um, it had a lot of clips from scooby on Zombie Island, which is kind of interesting. Um... But it like, it had like a red background whenever there was like text on it and whatever. I don't know, the, the trailer for this movie kind of seemed very more, I guess it kind of made it seem more dark and a little bit more gory than it actually is. Um, but I don't know, overall, um, it makes, the trailer makes the movie seem creepy. Um, more creepy than it actually is, which I guess entices people to watch it more, but I don't know. Um, so yeah, it's kind of the trailer. If you were to watch it, um, I would, I think it would honestly make me interested um, if I had seen the movie, but then I feel like I'd be a little let down just because it's not quite as dark as I feel like the trailer makes it seem to be. So there's all of the points so my overall verdict for this movie I'm giving it a 3 out of 5 um, Zombie Island I gave 5 out of 5 so I'm giving this one 3 out of 5 um, it's definitely not one of my favorites but it also is not one of the worst um, it's probably my least favorite of the original four that were done by Mook Animation Studios, um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like, and maybe a part of it is because Zombie Island raised the bar so high at the beginning and so we go into this one and now it's kind of like, uh, but yeah, so I'm giving this one a 3 out of 5. Not my, not one of my most favorite, but not one of my least favorite by any means. So yeah. And then, quick little a fun fact for this film before we go. Um, this is one of the rare movies that actually got a full um, soundtrack album release. There was a CD. I mean, I'm sure you can find it on eBay or something. They're just ridiculous prices now, they're hard to find, um, but there's a CD for Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost, and it has all the music from the movie, you know, Earth, Wind, Fire, and Air, Hex Girl, um, the Scooby-Doo theme song sung by Billy Ray Cyrus, and then they made a whole bunch of other songs um, just to kind of tie in with the movie. There's one um, about Velma. Falling for Ben Ravencroft, um, there's one about how the gang will solve the mystery no matter what and whatever, there's one about Scooby Snacks I believe and whatever. Um, anyway, so some of the songs are really fun, you know, um, some of them kind of have nothing to do with the movie, um, they just kind of made them and whatever, but the songs are really fun so if you're able to find or listen to that soundtrack anywhere, I do recommend it. Um, so even though the movie is not one of my absolute favorite, I do really enjoy the soundtrack that was released alongside it. So yeah, that is going to be my review for Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. Um, I'm sorry if you guys are a little disappointed with my review. I feel like some people are, but this one just wasn't one of my absolute favorites to be completely honest. Okay, so the next review is Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders. So, how will I feel about that one? Well, let me just give you a hint. It's always been one of my favorites. So, I am excited to do that one. So, yes, until next time, I will leave you with this. So. 
Thank you, Scooby, for joining me again. Thank you all for watching. And if you like to hit the like button, it's always appreciated. And if you're new here, press the subscribe button because why not? And yes, until next time, um, thank you for watching and we will get into the next review very soon. So, goodbye everyone. Goodbye.